Hey guys, happy Wednesday, happy hump day, as we like to say. <laughs> I have my daughter here, so I wanted to come on because I wanted to do an interview with her because Lexi, my daughter here, she's my youngest of two, has known of my doll collecting for probably as long as you I've been can aware. remember. As long as I could conceive a thought. <laughs> So I thought it'd be fun to do an interview of like what she thinks of the Reborn community and some of the things that she knows that I do. And so I figured this would be a fun way to kind of, you know, put her on the spot sort of, but also she can tell us her true feelings. So I've got questions. She has not seen the questions. <laughs> <laughs> so this is going to be, you know, off the cuff for her. So let's get into it. So... First question, okay. do you think it's odd that I collect dolls? No, I think that it's artwork. Um, I think that everybody has something that they gain a lot of bliss from having more of. And so with these being timeless pieces of art that are like most of the time one of a kind, they're pretty extraordinary. And the resale value is up there. It is always lucrative, it's always moving, and there's always somebody who wants it because it's a one of a kind. And there's always something new coming out. Mm -hmm. So it's the cycle. Heck yeah. The doll buying cycle that it's many of us logical. fall into. Logical collector's choice. So you know that I collect realistic dolls, but I've collected dolls my whole life of different various kinds. Mm -hmm. Do you think that like the realistic, hyper-realistic dolls and the dolls we collect, do you think that that's like considered, should be considered a normal hobby? I think that this is a very controversial subject and I think that there are some really horrendous hobbies that are out there and a lot more prevalent. <laughs> and I think that there are, there's a spectrum to this hobby. As we both know, we've explored together, we've looked at things, I've looked at things, and I don't I don't know what you would even perceive as normal. I think that there's a demographic of people that have that normality for everything. So I think that um, I can think of some really unnormal. <laughs> so in things, terms of like some of the awful things, this would be considered more of normal to I you? I think it's complying to human and like natural law. I think things that obscure from natural law, like that impede on safety and unhealthy things, things. <laughs> with people, I think that those would be considered unnormal because the natural balance is natural law. Okay. So no, I think that it falls into normal. Okay, that's cool. You're, you're not of the majority of the outsiders looking in, which is why I yeah, asked. I have some pretty weird things they do in their spare time <laughs> that are not... Very true, you have not point there. Perceived, so. <laughs> okay, so... Do you find, because you know the dolls I've had, so mm -hmm. I've had like a plethora of dolls over the years, yeah. right? And ultra realism is always like my goal. Yeah. Do you find that there's any type of creepiness or eeriness to the hyper realism that like Monroe for, per se, my silicone doll that is like hyper realistic, do you find that creepy in any way? In a negative way? Like, in any kind of way like so it could be cre okay so that's a good question so it could be creepy that it's like what we call um uh oh my gosh i can't think of it uncanny valley effect is what they call yeah. it where you get that oh it's a little too real and it kind of freaks you out yeah. or it's just creepy because it's weird and i don't i don't think you find it well, i'm not going to answer for you but does it creep you out in the sense that it's almost too real? No, no, it doesn't. Not the ones that you've had. I have seen, I forgot to tell you this, I have seen where like they have like the fake placenta. Yes. That one freaks me out a little bit because you <laughs> gotta get in there to get it out. And then that might be a little strange. <laughs> it can be used for teaching purposes. So I don't have like a sturdy opinion, but no, I don't I think that it's I think that it's pretty interesting. And then people who are on a more like emotional psychological spectrum for how they and why they use the dolls I think 
the realism is kind of a coping mechanism to have that weight for certain people. Mm -hmm. So I think that as a collector like you are, I don't, I don't see anything. It doesn't creep me out. Okay. And I've held a lot of your dolls. I just yes. think it's super sweet yes. and cool. I okay. like to squish their little feet. <laughs> Squ the squish <laughs> factor of the silicone yeah. is amazing. <laughs> well, I mean, Monroe has a little like belly cord stump, but it's not like... They have ones where they literally have a hole where you can interchange like yeah, you newly said, like, magnetic, right? I yeah. guess they have. Yep, yeah. yep. Some of Claire yeah. Taylor's dolls have the magnetic. It's just so incredible that a human being can like make something that real. Like the capture that realism is pretty. It takes a lot of talent. It's crazy. like they take a lump of clay and they have to figure out like the dimensions and the proportions and they have to make it look like a human from like all angles yeah. like there's I just mean, so much to it people who ridiculed this hobby like spend as much time sharpening a skill as these tall creators yeah. do then maybe they could do something fun with themselves too yeah yeah, yeah. i agree i agree yeah. okay here's a good one i've been trying to think of some good questions to ask it's been a long time coming yeah what do you think about me having a nursery in the house in which to keep my realistic dolls, my reborn dolls? I think <laughs> it sounds, I feel like I'm giving a redundant perspective, but it's pretty solid. I just think that um, every collector has a space for their hobby, whether it's a gym, whether it is something for other collectible items, whether it's their closet. I mean, Jesus Christ. I, I would like Sorry. to have. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Um, I would like to have a People closet. People have showrooms for their shoes. <laughs> That's um, true. Lots of money. I, I should have turned the spare bedroom into like an extra closet for all yeah, of my things. Yeah, you kind of You have it meticulously stacked. <laughs> um, and I think that for people who don't understand the hobby and the value that it does bring outside of like your own internal pleasures, I think that they wouldn't understand and it might be more where more skepticism is kind of uprooted, but at the same time, I also know that you do make an income, you know what I mean, from doing this hobby. Mm -hmm. And people love the way that you put together those spaces. People love the products you find and the things that you find. And I think it is becoming, it's becoming way more normalized um, for not even just doll collecting, but if you see all the videos of there are people who love little trinkets and they have like crazy amounts of coffee things or like you just see these really cool videos. Staging. Yeah. It's all it's staging. all about especially I think social media has brought on this whole having a background for staging, having a place for things. So it's if you're going office. to showcase, you want a place that you can do it in that seems realistic, especially when we're talking about realistic dolls, right? Mm -hmm. So it makes sense. If you hear noise, it's Rue. She's coned having trouble navigating and she's trying to get comfortable with separation things yes she is stuck to the hip and she's a pain tonight <laughs> but yeah so i think that with all of the avenues of social media outlets that we're all sharing on staging is priority i think that's what initially made me want to have a nursery mm -hmm. but also a safe place where i could shut the door and when you guys were little, so when you and Brittany were little, you guys kind of always just stayed out of my doll yeah. spaces. And you always knew. Did you always know that that's like, that's mom's space? Yeah. Or did you ever sneak in there? Oh, I snuck in there all the time. Totally? Yeah, I had to look at the Christmas presents. <laughs> that's right. It's because, the, okay, so for any of you out there that don't know this, my doll room or nursery space is also the present space. So it's where I keep <laughs> all of the Christmas presents. Oh, see, I didn't know that. Now I, now I know. Yeah, I, I know now. I think you do. <laughs> like I see those footprints in my rug. <laughs> okay, next question. How do you feel about me being a YouTuber, making videos for social media? I think that that's one of the most lucrative ways to get your skills, niches, and arts out there. So I think you were ahead of you were ahead of the time. Done it for you a long were, time. You were on the block before all these crazy kids made it there. <laughs> so so many people. I think that, and that's another thing under like the topic of scrutiny. I think that people who make videos are going to be 
way more understanding and like open and knowing like why and what you do makes sense. Mm -hmm. Whereas people who are just viewers or people who don't they, have anything geez, to the do outsiders. in their time, but complain or ridicule, ridicule you. I think that um, we're in a space and an age when you first started, I think that these things were way less popular and oh, it, sure. it was way more controversial. Yeah. I remember we almost didn't want to, you didn't want to tell certain people or certain people in like different spaces. You're like, no, yeah. but now it's so like everyone's documenting everything. Everyone has their, has their phone out. Has <laughs> rooms, their little it's true. setups. I never thought like about everyone, that. And I, I, I follow and I'm in coordination, in co coordinates with a lot of figures that spend a lot of time like articulating what they want in their spaces, even just for podcasts. Yeah. Like, so yeah. I don't think it's weird at all. I think that if anything, you're a sturdy member on the platform that everyone's trying to make it in now. So it's pretty awesome. Yeah. So, okay. So on the, on the topic of social media or YouTube primarily, you know, I've gotten some mean, nasty people that have you're lucky come about. You're lucky I couldn't come through the screen, man. <laughs> what do you think about that? And the whole idea of, you know, because some, some viewpoints, and I have to agree with this somewhat, is that I do put myself out there. So it's kind of somewhat on me that I have to take the good with the bad. You know, there's always going to be someone either from within the community, the alcohol collecting community, or from outside that doesn't understand it and will come at you. Mm -hmm. and come for you, so to speak, whether it be attacking your appearance, attacking the dolls. What are your thoughts on that? How does that make you feel? Do something else if you can, man. <laughs> She's seen a lot of stuff over the at years. At this point, I think that all social media has gotten to a point where the people who did not break free of themselves internally so they could express themselves externally are attacking those who have the ability and have gotten through on their on their timeline to do so. I think that you are a pretty neutral, happy, and supportive person in any community that you've ever been a part of. And I try to be. It's hard really some days. Has a new thing to say. It's hard I'm, some days. Well, I mean, setting I have my moments and being agitated towards an aggressor is a little bit different than going out of your way to dismantle something that someone else is building. Mm -hmm. Build something for yourself, you know? Yeah. It's okay, it's okay that she's putting herself out there because <laughs> it's what she likes to do. Find something you like to do. It's what I like it's to do. It's wonderful. It feels great. <laughs> Learn to express yourself and you won't have to express displeasure towards others and you've handled it very gracefully, I must I've say. I've, I've tried. I've gotten very angry at the things that I've heard and I haven't liked something you can't Does it make you feel? But it's okay. Does <laughs> Does it make you feel protective over me? Yeah. 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 I, I appreciate that. Lucky. Lucky, lucky. <laughs> You're so cute. Okay, so. Um, I sort of already asked this. So how when is your like your if you can think back to being a kid, when did you first like notice that mom collect she collects dolls? Well, I think from an early age, you were getting us or allowing us to play with older ones you didn't like, or, mm -hmm. oh, I can Do you remember, remember the monster dolls. Yeah. Those are my favorite. I forgot about those. I remember bringing They're packed them away. You still have them? Yes. Yes. The little with the, broke. With the little broke. Who's broke? I need Britney's. Yeah. But no, I you still, still have, have them. Them. Yes. Have to pull them they're out. packed away. I will wow. have to totally pull them out because of the, the furry little, you and they're just the little to. faces and the little give, horns. I want that for my child. Okay. 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 But, Let's pull um, those out. And then there was Rosie. You had Rosie. Mm, Rambling Rosie. Yeah, you would let me You remember Rambling Rosie? Rambling Rosie? Yes. She's still here too. She's I remember the closet. She's in the, she's in the closet. I remember the closet, um, the house on Linderman. Mm-hmm. I knew exactly where you kept them. <laughs> I was a very aware child, though. I was like a toddler in that house, so I don't even. You know were how little. Remember that. You were little. Do you remember your Christmas was. when you got your first like real reborn? Yes. I don't remember what it looks like. I got you one for you and one for Britt. And at the time, it seemed like you really loved them. Really I think cool. they're still here too, somewhere. 
I don't know how they made it. Out. I know, I know. I, I, know still, I have, know. because like because they got packed away and stored. Because when she lost interest, I just went, oh, let's just put that away and we'll just set that to the yeah, side. Maybe like, someday, brutalized. someday you might want to pull them out and go. I remember when Mom got this for me for Christmas. Yeah, those were customs I had made for you. I had Nars make those for you. But yeah, but good fond memories. Yes, absolutely. Always uh, positive. See, see, these yeah. are the things I'll find out later on, like the fact that you actually knew where my dolls were, and would go in and or find them and well, look at I them. Well, have a strong energy signature. It's something that you loved, so that energy imprinted on it. And another thing is just like, and it kind of touches on some of like the social media and the negativity is like, adults. We're taught that we have to lose like that childlike play inside of us. And I yeah. think that those of us who are on the journey of rediscovering like what it means to be truly human and really enjoy your life is like being able to keep that fire burning inside yes. of you. Because if you don't have joy and fun and play, and I think that's what's working of, worth. Like no, why work so hard? And that's why we age mentally, we get stuck and stagnant and we're like everything is so serious. So this is keeping me young. It's keeping you young. And I, like that. and I think that people who don't understand that, and I think that's where a lot of negative opinions come from, are people who have like almost like imprisoned that. themselves. Yeah. They don't have like, something fun to enjoy like that. Right. Like that they makes can't sense. laugh and dance and arrange and That's play. so true. It's very true. And, you know, like, we, we do lose them that. as children. And then as an adult, like, we're I expected have a to whole, give it up. Whole evolution. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the same with like anybody that collects anything. I think it's also why I'm always drawn to like the pretty cute things. Yeah. Like I just like to have things because they make me feel happy. Yeah. Don't always need them, but we sure do like them a lot. Right. <laughs> When's the last time you colored, man? Dance well, in the rain. Now, anything. now they have like there's a whole hobby of like the coloring world. And in know. fact, there's there's actually um, a really sweet lady that. Uh, she has two channels. She has a doll channel and she has an adult coloring channel. And she does like, it's amazing. The coloring You know how world. happy she probably is. She's very happy. More happy than the haters. <laughs> true, true. More happy than the haters. Yes, she's very happy. She's a very kind person. <laughs> but yeah, no, I think hobbies keep us, I think hobbies keep us young. And I think that's what my mom, your grandmother said, is that she wished she'd had a hobby when she you know, like I have that I enjoy she so had much. She horses. But, but she doesn't have those can't. anymore. I know. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll, I'll get know. rich and buy her a horse. <laughs> can you buy one for me too? Yeah, I want one for me too. I need, I need to ride again too. <laughs> so, last question. Okay. Do you think you would ever collect dolls in your future? Mm. Or in your lifetime? Because you have a couple I'm holding for you. That's true. Um, Maybe for your kids someday? Maybe, maybe. If I was a human that wanted to root more, I think there'd be a higher possibility, but I just, it would always be in storage because, yeah. you know, I want to bounce around and yeah. I don't You're know a free if spirit. I would spend that's thousands an of dollars for my child. Well, I mean, you wouldn't <laughs> buy that plane well, and go to Africa with, we don't want to drag them through the dirt. <laughs> It might not be the collection that we want with us, you know. Rocks, we <laughs> like the ratty hair. Buy my kid as many feathers Just as the she thought wants. of that. Just the thought of like, tr Does that like traveling. You? Yeah, it just, <laughs> it's just. Mm. It's not a traveling hobby. Clean hobbies. space. Clean sp it is not a traveling it's not hobby. Not a traveling Although, hobby. although, I have to say that my friend Angela, who lives over in the UK, love her. Um, she does. She, she goes traveling, her and her husband, because they're retired. So they go traveling and they have, they, she does occasionally take a doll with her, but she has like a special space to keep them like very Does she well bring protected. them a carry-on? Cause she might have a heart. No, have they, a no they drive. They have oh, like a, okay, they have like a, a, on a plane, I'm thinking. Yeah, no, 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 no. That is However, like a $10,000 insurance claim every well, time. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's the thing. That's why I never ended up taking a doll to the Rose Doll Show because I just, I couldn't wrap my head around if taking the doll. If it gets through, oh no. Well, I, no, I would have taken her as a carry-on. Oh. True. But like just sending her through the x-ray machine, having someone potentially open touch. You might think you're uh. storing something in the cavity. <laughs> <laughs> it could get really weird really fast. You're like, what's in the well, cavity? Well, okay. So when dolls, so here's a little story. Totally off subject, but it'll, it, it's funny. Like my friend Angela again, her dolls went like 
were held in customs because they thought it was like a, a dead baby because it was that realistic. And some of them have like spine armatures and arm and leg armatures, so maybe it looks like bones. But like it was like it sat and she had to she's Zhongya on camera. Oh my god. <laughs> she forgot she was on camera. But no, like it's a thing. Like it really freaks people out. So it's like the worry and concern that that she went through waiting for her doll to get through customs. It was so, it was crazy. Yeah, crazy. Uh, scary times. Yeah. And like you said, it's a lot of money. And like, yeah, I don't know if I could ever really happily travel with any doll. I would have anxiety. I, I have anxiety thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> so, journey. thank you for answering my questions. Of course. Do you want to share anything else while you're, while you're here with an audience? Feel free. No? Got nothing? I don't think I have anything. You're so cute. <laughs> so guys, I hope that this was something different, something fun. Hearing my very loved, youngest, my baby, my mini, I like to call her my mini me. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed her answers and got to hear her take on the hobby a little bit. Oh, one more question. You know, I was recently reached out again with another news media station. Mm. What are your thoughts on that? That last one that I did. I knew he was wrong from the time he stepped in. I tried to tell her. I was watching him like a hawk. I was like, she's just like, he was making it as weird and awkward. Just like the way that he put her in the rooms and the angles and just, here, sit on the couch. I asked, watch TV holding your doll. I'm like, I don't do that. <laughs> and I saw her face. I was behind angry. him going. I was so angry. Oh my god! You saw it coming. Yeah, and he pretty, uh, yeah. And I even though my opinions are not camera friendly, <laughs> and even though a lot of people watched that interview, and they're not an interview. I guess it's part of the interview, but the 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 video clip and the mm -hmm. news interview on the, the written part, and thought it was actually really good. <laughs> you're you're mm -hmm. yawning. It's late here. It's late, and we've eaten food. Um. <laughs> But a lot of people thought it was a great interview. However, I will stand firm in the fact that he made it weird. And on top of that, for me, I just think that there's an energy resonance from somebody that can step foot in somebody's home and sit there and lie and deceive and stand energetically in a, such an unsanctioned and un, impure way. It was just, he Very infiltrated uncool. our space. He, he lied. I asked him many questions like, asking yeah. his choices and positions and all yeah. these different things and for somebody to feel confident in such a pool of for me like really just not pure human in them i think is gross um, yeah and he's he probably that. will have a very great life because <laughs> i don't you know receive and you create all those energy loops yeah weird stuff coming from you <laughs> and there you have it weird stuff yeah yeah, yeah that was he was not, he did not set out to do good things with that. His intentions were not good. So I've been reached, I have been contacted yet again. And I sent, I don't even think I told you, I sent them paragraphs explaining because they responded to my initial, what is this, what is the topic going to be? And again, it was about using dolls for comfort, loss, Alzheimer's, which all those can be used for that, but that's not... I explained that 99.99999% of us collectors, we don't collect for those reasons. I certainly don't. So I got, you got the wrong girl here. I collect for the art. That's the only reason why I collect. I don't collect because I don't have family and loved ones and a life that's full. Um, not that there's anything wrong with it, but like that's not my, that's not why I collect. Um, so we'll yeah. see if they respond back to me. But I'm getting a lot more bold in how I respond to these people that reach out to me and go, hey, we want to do an you interview. You have to. People and just... draw the boundary. Draw the boundary. Because unless it's going to be like true, authentic, let's talk about the art. Let's talk about yeah. that. Like, let's not, let's not make it creepy. Let's not make it weird. Yeah. Let's not be like, I need my doll to get through the day. Because it's not what it's about. 
And even if that is somebody, it's it's not the general population. It's fine. You know, because, <laughs> but it's not again. it's not the reborn community which they want to paint it to be. So I'm like I'm very firm on that. Yeah. But anyways, okay, we're gonna wrap it up here because we're 25 minutes in. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing my lovely little Lulu. I call be her nice Lulu. out there. Come Ooh. Almost ripped See? your hair out. <laughs> Be nice out there. <laughs> but anyways, guys, I hope you're having a great, well, we're halfway through. We're almost done with the week, but hopefully you're having a great week. And you will definitely see me and Monroe very, very soon. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.